Greetings everyone and welcome back to TNO, the Lost Days of Europe. I'm your host, Mercenary Mocha Lover. Right now, we are leading the Republic of West Alaska, but we got the kid. Are you comfortable, Mr. Soblin? The interpreter said, relaying the message from his employer who sat directly across from Soblin. The Maverick Mercenary Mitchell, or Mitchell, Warbo III, Esquire. A scarce few days before, the government of West Alaska had sentenced Valerie Soblin, former commissar of the NKVD, to death. Now he sat with a de facto dictator of the nation, the Latin after puffing fumes from a cigar like a smokestack of overworked factories. Yes, Salvin said in the most baffled tone he could imagine. Why am I here? When his guards told him that he was meeting Werble, he believed that he would be marched like lambs to the slaughter to stand down before the gun barrel of a ruthless mercenary and hunted down without mercy. Instead, he found himself more or before a polished plate. With an illustrious steak flanked by silverware far from the dark basements of the Magadan prisons, this dining room was well lit, a chandelier hanging above it, its beads shining like glassy stars. We're just here to have a dinner in peace. From man to man, the warble said, a final goodbye. A mercenary draped in the trappings of a waiter poured red wine to Salvin's glass. Want a cigar, Mr. Salvin? Although, maybe you don't know how to smoke one of these yet. Warble smiled at Salvin, who took a look a look free of malice and ill intent, a steel facade worn over an evil face. When he found the commissar staring at him with a mix of befuddlement and disgust, he tipped his glass over in Salvin's direction. No, oh, come on, Mr. NKVD, the wine isn't that bad. I'm fine, thanks, Salvin said. I'd rather suffer the indignity of imprisonment than being treated and brought over to the side of an enemy of socialism. Warble laughed again. Who says you are going to live, Mr. Salvin? You are 23 at most. Live a little, he coughed. Before you die, that is. He gestured up his fork at Salvin. Go on, dig in. He drank his wine and ate his food, not paying attention to the commissar at all, who did not touch his plate. He left Warble's presence as resigned of his fate as before, although a part of him wondered what the mercenary truly was. A puzzling night. To be sure, my friends. And right now, we are at war with the divine mandate of Siberia under men. He has six factories, which is, which makes me feel a little better, but he's up to nine divisions. We have up to 11. We're going straight in, and maybe we should stop training a boat. Cool. Hope you guys are having a good day. We've got a couple comments to go through as well, but we'll get to those as soon as we can. we got 11 guys. Never mind. Can we actually win here? We might be able to. And I was complaining a little bit yesterday that we couldn't quite win, but... As long as we got enough for reinforcements and we make our division template actually somewhat usable, then that's not too bad. Oh, we're actually running over there too. Nice. Do we have any planes? Maybe, but we have 52 guys. We can afford a single plane. Nice. Thank goodness. Alright, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hopefully these guys don't die immediately, but you know what? You never know. Zero guys, so be it. <clears throat> now, set on out. Losses. 200 versus 900. Not bad, not bad. But they definitely have more soldiers than us, so. And you guys, move on in. Actually, I'm gonna... Whoa. Whoa, hello. I did not know there's a division down here, too. <clears throat> Come down to Kamchatka. Kamchatka. Yeah, I did not realize they had a soldier there. Okay, well, they go bye-bye. Oh, what do we got here? We can build new schools. New workers, research facilities, agriculture it is. Actually, let's take a look at this. Not bad. Academic base is still improving. Mechanization is rapidly improving. Eight a month. Yes, please. Proclaim the soldiers' republic, my friend. Proclaim it. So someone also said in the comments that I should do this focus as well, the rules of nature, before we go down here, so we will. But I want to see what the faithful does, because we are at war, and I like more attack. The faithful. Toward north, a new adversary has appeared. The father, whose name is Alexander Men, has assembled a motley crew of peasant militias and disillusioned NKVD and fascist soldiers to assist in his cause. He seems to be a Christian anarchist who, ironically, for one of the orthodox disposition, holds unorthodox ideas of Christianity. From the reports of Firebase Moses, this force is mighty and deep, perhaps the strongest that we may fight in the Far East aside from the Reds in Irkutsk and Baratia. The war against him will no doubt take a toll on our personal account in time, however. Making the first move and perhaps gets us the leg up needed to succeed in crushing his forces. Regardless, many within our ranks are feeling are feeling ants angsty with braving such a vast and motivated force. We have seen insurgents all over the world. That is the reason we ought to succeed. Get a little bit more organization and max planning and attack the bonus against the country for a little bit of time. A soldier's constitution. Warble leaned forward on his desk, his armchair either too small or too large for him, depending on the moment. In his head pounded the noisiest headache known to man. He shouldn't have drunk anything before today. He gripped his pen, or his grip on his pen was slippery, and his grasp on reality equally as magnificent. Putting his pen down, he cracked his fingers together and stretched, stringing an avalanche of pain in his head as the cranks of his soldier so, sold shoulder had 
administer their punishment. Every tremor of his head, every twitch of his eye seemed to shake and break reality around him. In front of him was the mother of all documents he had ever had to write. He liked to pretend that in his alcohol-induced waking nightmare that the black shows of ink were perils of wisdom shining in the dark. The other part of him called it BS. The sum of himself, the part of that thought the chair was too big believed the latter. Sometimes one must lie for the truth to shine on another piece of BS. Uh, door knock. Are you done? The voice of the fearful French aide said. Sir? Warble decided against replying. His throat was parched, and whatever sound that emanated from it, no mortal human being could ever withstand. He could do with a glass of warm water, no, but constitution first, sir. Gosh darn French and their constituents or constitutions. What do they know about running nations? Two empires, three republics, and a country that was half sunk into the clutches of the Mediterranean. He grumbled, he complained, he shuddered and shivered. Sighing, he admitted that it would probably need to be done sooner or later. He peered down on the great sheet of paper and saw that he only got onto minority protections. It was going to be a long day. Never really was a desk jockey. Man, he's like me when I'm doing my papers. Woo! Then again, I'm not using writing constitutions. Maybe not yet. Maybe someday, you know? You never know. Alright, keep heading out, guys. We're doing okay. Oh! Oh, that's a capital now. Okay. Well, if you can... Actually, we took Amalon, which is uh, looks like about almost 50% of their you know levels there, or victory points, but still. Ah, uh, Nancy Wake. Nancy, Nancy, Nancy. Now, I don't mind if someone here could get us, like, maybe a little bit more equipment capture ratio. I think that'd be pretty good. Hopefully there's no one around here to stop us. Even if these guys get cut off, I don't really care. Actually, you guys head on down there. You just kind of do whatever you want. Go up there, maybe? I don't know. The main goal is to get here. But happy 1965. Oh, look at that. We got some manpower. Do we core something? We might have cored something. Nice. We got 40 factories, so that, that might be it. War for hearts and minds? Sure. From the outset, it's clear that the father relies on the support of the peasants and hunter-gathered communities concentrated in the northern parts of the Far East. As he traveled south, however, many joined him, willing to give their lives for the kingdom of God, as envisioned by Alexander Men. <clears throat> these peasants, although on terrain, are numerous. However, by relying on these, Alexander Men has made a crucial mistake. All it needs to shatter his base of support is to win over the hearts and minds. <clears throat> it boils down to that. Then, a war of propaganda. From our radio stations in Magadan, we shall shout for the liberation of the Far East from the tyranny of that heretic of oh, that heretic our soldiers will perform infiltration raids in, into enemy territory distributing rations and food in exchange for information and intelligence without his base of support the father's nothing his house of cards shall fall tumbling into the dock very nice it seems weird sometimes that uh, I press enter for like to do the focus to or, you know get the focus started but it doesn't always work hmm I'm gonna view can you beat this guy up? Hopefully. Pavel? Autogaim? He's looking pretty good. It, looks like, it almost looks like a modern portrait of somebody. Oh, there goes a, a Bennett. I didn't know he was a Mormon, but he is a Mormon. Then again, if I read, actually read this, he might tell you. But he, I think he focuses a lot on like GDP and such, and like you know economy and growth and such. So, I gotta play with Bennett someday. I really have to. Efficient supply chains. The war against the fathers ongoing. Our soldiers assemble from the greatest mercenaries the world has ever seen are faring relatively well considering their numbers and our circumstances. However, there's a problem. We're fighting in the enemy's favorite area. Then rough terrain, combined with the harsh weather, makes it difficult for soldiers to resupply amid the chaos of the lines, not to mention the lack of infrastructure and roads ensuring that no trucks would pass unmolested through the Siberian woods. With the amount of punishment that the father is giving us, we need to secure that a steady supply of ammunition and guns make it to the front lines. We'll attempt to replicate the enemy's techniques and methods, adapting their system to better suit our way of conducting war. Fast runners, new roads, routes, and as well as reassurances up and down the line that supplies are incoming should do the trick. After all, this is not the first rodeo for many of our soldiers. To lessen the impact of local peasant uprisings, which do hurt us right now. So, Can I scavenge for loot? I'm going to go and secure control because as we core more stuff, we're going to lose stabilities, which really, 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 really sucks. Uh, Nancy, do you have any other... Ah, uh, yes, you do. No, mm. Nancy is very good with infantry. We're heading down there. Very good. Any other territory? Not really. They lost 12,000 guys. We've lost about 1,000. Not bad. Technical support is very good. And I would like to get to the next level of... What was it? The stage? The regional stage? Just because... Oh my goodness. This is kind of crazy. 
but we definitely need to get another research slot, especially since I want to get helicopters. Now, we are already trying to make helicopters. We have a total of five, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Can I convert one of you guys to mobiles? Armor, no. Yeah, I don't think we have it yet. Ooh, can I not make tanks? Or, not tanks. I can make tanks. Um, I forget which one specifically. Actually, can you guys... Why are you guys attacking that? Hmm. 81. 48, I mean. Hmm. There are two divisions here. And you, all three of you are attacking. You might be able to win still there. It's just supply chains, though. Shock and all. The supply lines are secure, and the war over the hearts and minds of the superior peoples are well underway. However, there is still a persistent problem. The father of the north holds an advantage in personnel that we cannot quite match. And the portions of the line that we hold, fending off of the militia, has proved to be a double, doable task. There lies a problem. There are not enough of us to keep the peasants from breaking through sections of the front left unguarded. If we let them continue as they please, they will whittle us down to nothing. War has no plan prepared for his loss, however. The answer to predic predicament lies, or his predicament, lies in acting in complete contradiction to the enemy's expectations. Expectations. He shall attack. By making quick, decisive strikes against the weak parts of their lines, we can overwhelm them and isolate their divisions, neutralizing any threats they may have. These peasant rebels may be many, but cut off from supplies of food, they can do nothing except surrender. It looks like we are quite struggling here. That's okay. That is quite okay. Over here, we are losing as well, which is not good. Do something else. Don't don't fight these guys then. Get, go somewhere else. Seriously, just go somewhere else. Oh, there goes Comey. Nice. They did a good job. A little bit of lag, though. And there you go. Let's finish that area off. 2,000, 14,000. The shield broken. Not bad, not bad. Alright, so I think it, I'm pretty safe in doing that one. Bad agricultural methods. Without food, men may not work, and without work, government simply ceases to ex exist. The bureaucracy that sustained it evaporating in a matter of weeks. However, the inverse is also true. With more food comes more plenty and formation of ever more complex states. After all, were not the first states formed with the creation of agriculture? <clears throat> New agricultural innovations will reduce the amount of labor needed on the fields and shift the workload to mechanized equipment like tractors and automated harvesters. Advances in fertilizer allows crops to grow quicker and cheaper. Men while food will be plenty very nice. Uh, I don't think we need to train our troops anymore. We, uh, well, actually, no, let's go do that. It's not really too much worth it, but I'm still going to take it. Seems like we're winning, which is good. It's always good to win, right? Help out. Take out that division. Even though we have a... Hey, we're still mobilizing now because we have better agricultural methods. Nice. Very nice. Oh, we're getting closer and closer and closer. Man, this is not good for our guys. Oh. Can you guys actually win there? Are you guys moving in there? So you go there, and then you might want to go there, maybe. We'll see what happens. Shock and all. Face of father? No, it's time for you got the rules of nature. It seems that the Soviets had quite an idea for government. They do not have capitalism in Irkutsk. The state manages all things and distributes the wealthy or the wealth according among the populace, a certain bias is notwithstanding. The NKBD thought sought to protect his way this way of living all the same. All at the same time. All at the same time. A system that might have guaranteed equality among it par that participate in it, but one that stifles growth and individual merit. Warble person cannot stand what he sees as a stagnation inherent within the system. This must change. We will disband all the institutions of communism and Irkutsk. No more communism, only capitalism. All that reside there will discover a new, better way of life. The American lifestyle to live. One must work, innovate, and interact with the market. We will go to the outskirts, purging the rest of the NKVD, making sure that they will never return. After all, this is done. The people of Arkutsk shall be grateful to Orbo for freeing them from the shackles of the past. Oh, there goes the old Vango. He tried. He really did try, but it wasn't enough. Nice. 14 civilian factories. Not bad. This should be enough for us to win the war. I say should be, but you never know. We're going to attack where we, we know where we can win, so there you go. And there we go. I knew it. Ah, flippin' knew it. Very good. Now we gotta make sure our army is actually really relatively good. So, here's what we wanna do. Uh, we're gonna duplicate this. 40s. Because we have enough army XP, we might as well do this now. So, elite new. We want elite. We want infantry. Infantry. Good, 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 good. And we do have a cup of coffee to keep us nice and warm, too, so. Uh, very nice. Operation Faithful's gone. Nice. <laughs> and that's going to cost all of our stuff. So, let's go ahead and do this stuff. And I don't want to see the the focus tree finished 
yet. So let's do Rules of Nature, and then we'll do the best is yet to come. Or face the father, actually. Alexander Man has been defeated. The father in the north, a rebellious character whose perversions of orthodox thinking has allowed himself to get this far now lay in our hands, at a complete and utter mercy. Horrible not understanding what all the riffraff about religion is all about, as now has to do with disposing him. He is honest, the father for him might as well be an alien from another world, here to come preach a strange faith. The Romans, however, might Romans might hold the secret to that solution. Damnatio memore. The Father does not exist and has never existed. We may not have enough close information with the Church, but with enough badgering, they should cave and declare that man is a heretic. We need to, to herd the masses away from the ideas of the Father, no matter how worthy they may, they are of realization. Once we defeat him, we will possess the northern parts of Siberia and one step closer to the completion of West Alaska's estate. Nice. Which is a very weird way of reading this. Cool. Nice. Nice. Alright, anything else here? Not too much, no. So, Red Dusk. <clears throat> Autopsy report. Go Yagoda, former General Secretary of the Supreme Soviet. Uh, examiner, Dr. Johann Haxaw Braun, German. Cause of death, gunshots, friendly fire. Contents. The subject was found with multiple wounds to the sternum section, allegedly fired from a private recruited from the lo Russian locals. The perpetrator had been court-martialed and punished according to the Provisional Military Code of West Alaska. It happened after an altercation between Genrik Yagoda and said recruit. The latter was tired and exhausted after a day of cleaning up after the mass of the NKVD. Having lived under the regime of Genrik Yagoda, the private attempted to reason with a dictator and inquire a motive for his cruel, inhumane reign in the Far East. Distress at his loss of his fiefdom to what he termed to be a bunch of mercenary troublemakers, the former president of the Presidium attempted to leverage his protection under the code and his higher education against to recruit to justify what he euphem euphemistically called excesses of socialism. This did not go well. After a brief round of intellectual sparring, which tired the Russian recruit found to be annoying to be at the highest extreme, he fired at Yagoda, killing him after a few shots from his now secured M1911. As it stands, with all parties satisfied with the outcome, the Russian punished and Yagoda gum. Here are the examiner's recommendations. Recommendation Immediate Bureau or Cremation. Sick Sepper Tyrannus. Nice. Very nice. We got about a little more three weeks. Actually, how's research going? Wow. Um, early helicopter. Do we get a template to use these guys eventually? Because we did try to look around and well, we don't really get another template. Maybe we can use helicopters. A oh, little bit of lag, and I mean they're they're mobile. They're definitely mobile. Helicopters are probably pretty mobile, but whatever. If we can't, then we've been wasting this this time to do so, so that kind of sucks. The best is yet to come, though. The armies of West Alaska have triumphed over the Reds in the east and the father in the north. Warble admits that he has achieved far, far more than he initially expected him to. From a lowly mercenary in the payroll, the most quarrelsome dude in the Far East, he has come to possess the entirety of the east coast of Russia, staring at his mother country across the Bering Strait. He doesn't doubt that he, a drunkard and an old, disgruntled soldier, could go far, but an entire state under his pocket? Madness, pure madness. Now is not the time to be sentimental, however. To the west, Russia is still in chaos, divided between states that buy with one another for their eventual survival over rest of soil. There's still so much to do. He looks to his home and then to his domain. There's much work to be done. The best is yet to come. Confessions of a mercenary. They let him wear his clerical attire, his black robes, and the crucifix wrapped around his neck. They gave him food. And there goes the end of the Reichstag. They gave him food, not rotting bottom of the barrel food, but actual edible meals. Even after the tribunal sentenced him to death by firing squad, they did not stop the special treatment. The father, Alexander Men, took everything they gave him with a pinch of salt. Gifts from human beings can never surpass the grace of the Lord. Holding it close to his heart, he accepted that his fate was to suffer in the clutches of soft mercy. He fasted and refused to wear his attire, preferring instead to wear the th threadbare drab wear the other prisoners. Today, however, was different. They forced him, first softly, later at almost gunpoint, to wear his clerical robes. The guard said that their master, the deplorable and reviled mercenary, Rachel Warble III, sought to meet him and confess. The remark alone stunned him, not to mention its repercussions. He was not even sure if Warble was baptized in the Orthodox Rite. His men discussed his Russian descent, but sh surely not. He debated the question until they brought him before Werbel. I have nothing to say to you, men said, and I doubt that your intent to confess was ever purer. He resisted the urge to spit before its tribulation and the punishment for his failed trial. The two men stared, stood and stared at one another before Werbel started. Come on, Father, Werbel flashed a smirk at the agitated father. I am irreligious. I just want to talk. I want to see a man of God view my career. Perhaps even he paused a blessing. He continued, I'd like to believe that I've been merciful in my youth. Youthful pursuits, I should say. Industrious in the art of war and an enthusiastic practitioner of the Lord's gift resolving conflicts with violence. He thumbed his revolver. I'm an arms dealer and not, and not just guns either. Men, tanks, artillery guns, and many other things that render modern conflict possible. Stepping closer to the Father, I've committed many sins, Father, and I do not see a way to turn back. Perhaps with your blessings I can. No, men cut him off. The surprise didn't register in Werbel's face. I thought so. He grinned. Take him away. We're done. Perhaps priests have, have, have spines after all. Oh, boy. Now we have a total of 288 people, or manpower, 
in reserve, which is nice, but... Oh, yeah, never mind. And Desperate Investments would still be very nice. 16, not bad. Not bad, my friends. <sighs> the bald man has unfortunately won. What a shame. <sighs> Bowman. I still need to play some. I'll the comments, though. Let's see. Some people really, really like the name of the Republic of West Alaska. I do. I love it. I think it's awesome. I think it's really, really awesome. Let's see. Oh, we've already done the Yagoda Imprisonment Focus. But there's quite a few nations that everyone, or not maybe everyone, but a lot of people want me to play. Including Modernist Tomsk, which I've already played as Tomsk before. So, I've played as Humanist Tomsk, Tomsk but not Modernist Tomsk. Which I will go, go back and play as Tomsk as well, but I have someone I want to go back to first before I go back to Tomsk. What the future holds, the war will end the Nancy, and Nancy stepped out into this town. A few days ago, enemy insurgents had occupied it, overturning the largely... Overly large village into a pitched battleground. Shells dotted the ground and brick buildings lay there shattered. Their facade now scattered around them. In the distance, a half-sunk parish overlooked the town. Its bells hollow. An artillery struck, it, struck its tower, and the defenders had to watch as the building sagged and leaned, retreating quickly in fear of further fire. Survivors of both sides staggered through the ruins, seeking medical attention and food. A shrill cry sounded in the distance. What a mess, Nancy said. But I guess you're used to this, seeing as she turned to see Warble puffing a cigar, enjoying his time as if he was walking on his own backyard. As nice to see that at least someone is enjoying the strip out in the woods. She glanced at a woman in white who hurried between the medical tents, carrying in her arms medical supplies and tools, as well as alcohol to clean wounds. Local medics, God, thank God for them, it was her idea. Their mission expanded exponentially, and now she was sitting in the front seat to the most mind-boggling phenomenon in Russia. She sighed. She... Her stay would be longer than expected, after all. Taking his cigar out of his mouth, Warble blew whiffs of smoke that waved around him like a fine mist. This may not look like it, he said, turning to Nancy, but we're saving these people. For God's sakes, he's kicked a mound of dirt in front of him. They can't even save themselves. Remember Germany? He smiled. We'll make soldiers out of them just yet. Looking at the two listless men who stood in front of the remnants of their house, their face emptied it by... Empty by disbelief and filled with uncertainty. We'll give them life liberty in the pursuit of happiness. Maybe coming here was a mistake. Maybe the entirety of the mis mission was a mistake. I hope you're right, she said. I would hate for all this suffering to go into something wrong. I am never wrong. And, okay, so now we have this, and let's go ahead and do this as well. Scam for loot. That'd be nice, but we gotta entrench control of Siberia. We gotta begin fortifying positions. The Republic of West Alaska unifies the Russian Far East. What a thrill. The United States of Siberia. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Now, we're going to go ahead and do Poverty Relief because you should always do Poverty Relief because it helps your GDP growth, which is just awesome. Hmm. We're going to boost that up. And military spending, we're going to cut that down for now. So basically, we're stuck at the same place. 200 million is not bad. That's not bad, too. Very nice. And a third research slot, thank goodness. At 65, let's get some more research speed. No, but we need that in 70. Let's grab some more of this stuff. Because we've been lacking. Because I was focusing so hard on helicopters, but there's not much we could do. But... In the land of fortune and glory, no one quite expected that a mere mercenary commander could ever could, could ever take a significant stretch of Russia. Not even the intelligence experts in Langley and Washington could have predicted the chain of events that led to horrible success in the Far East, triumphing over all of the traditional powers of the area. Fascist communists in the father of the north has arrived at a position to establish a new kind of state, a haven for mercenaries, the ruthless citizens of the world rendered useless by the lack of conflicts. No longer shall these concerns plague them. For all who wor lacked work, the Republic of West Alaska shall provide. The disenfranchised, the betrayed, and the disillusioned shall again find refuge beneath the light of liberty. Welcome to West Alaska, gentlemen. We have work to do. Alright, so now I'm not really sure how Warble is going to play out. Oh, Warlord Recruitment, of course, is gone, which makes total sense. Wow. Wow, that's a lot more manpower. In the we are demobilizing, which is not very good. We still have the mercenary state. Oh, we have a lot of poverty, which we need to fix traditional rules, military austerity. Oh, that's why we have it. Military austerity. But hey, it's still, that's going up by three. That's still going up by two and a half, two point five. Poverty is decreasing, which is not good. So that's why I chose the other one. Uh, Thirty-eight percent stability, not really good. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that one. So one less goodbye. <clears throat> she stood at the piers of Magadan's port, looking out at the early dawn. Uh, as the sun cracked through the dark, overcast clouds brushing the cold seas with budding colors. In her lips was a cigarette whose cracky or crackle the briny sea wards wind stole. Though the sweet smell of tobacco never went away, she shivered in her fur coat a gift from a friend, or was it a former friend? And her breaths came in gusts of white and gray as trembling fi fingers plucked the cigarette from its place. The pavement clicked beside her, and she reflectively reached for a holster. Nothing was there, much less a gun. Old habits died hard. She eased up, taking in the full figure of her friend, or was it the former friend? He reeked of whiskey, although he tried his best to mask the odor beneath a layer of perfume. Strange, she, she did not recall. Him doing anything of the sort, not least to someone he disagreed with. 
Maybe he was still a friend, taking her up her voice above the column of the way. She started to speak, her tone tempered by the arguments they had. You seem different today, she said. What's the occasion? He greeted her with a smirk. I don't know, he said, pretending to take offense. I was going to say goodbye to a friend. She's leaving today. She smiled, trying to hold back her laughter. What's she like, this friend of yours? Were you close? She's like family with me. I was going to give her this. She tapped at the wooden box in his hands. I was hoping you could pass it to her. What does she look like? You'll know her when you see her. He handed her the box. There's something in there, a real antique. Don't lose it. Before she could reply, he had started walking away. Goodbye, she shouted at the top of her voice. The waves and the wind stole the reply. Goodbye. Oh, no, we're, we're losing Nancy. Wake. Gordon Ingram. Huh. Well, goodbye, Nancy. If I knew that, I wouldn't use you as a general, but whatever. Mercenary, yeah. Chiyoki Ikeda. Huh. John Peters. Oh, Pavlov is still here, which is good. Engineer, out of supply. I'm probably going to go with Engineer. Yeah. Oh, uh, Pavlov, though. He's level 3, but whatever. Uh, yeah, I did say I want Scavenger, so that's good with us. Good, good, good. Very, very nice, my friends. Wow, we're not making anything right now because of the administrative strain, probably. Mercenary State is awesome. But, yeah. Oh, because the administration really hurts us. Oh, there goes Deet's son. But, yeah, we did change our flags, which means in the next episode you will see a flag change as well. Funding our endeavors. Alright, so what do we want to do next? These arsenals open for business. That's not bad. Uh, in defense of the Republic. Counterinsurgency units. Oh, that sounds like so much fun. Modernization and standardization. Ooh, combat schooling. I like that army professionalism change. And that makes sense for us to do. Unlocks more people as ministers. You know what? Since we're here, what do you think we should do? Because we have to do modernization and standardization eventually. Should we do encourage local recruitment? Or Hela Safari? I'm, I'm, I'm pulling towards Hela Safari because that seems like a lot of fun. Or a Russian National Guard. Or American Ingenuity. I, I'm I, Personally, I'm pulling towards the right side, but let me know in your comments below, because I want to know what you guys are thinking. The question of recognition. Context on the Hill. A global reach. Applying, supplying wet work. Denouncing enemies of freedom. From America with love. Over the table. Under the table. A group above nations. Ooh, I kind of like that. Expanding our horizons, an international redoubt. All right, not bad. Co-opting the bureaucracy. I kind of want to do that one. Yeah, let's go do that one first. Cause, ooh, the wealth of Siberia. Ooh. But when Werbel won this land from the tyrants that proclaimed their love of authoritarian ideologies, he discovered that each of these statelets had its own bureaucracy. The communists of Vach, just through their obsession with order, has left us with a treasure trove of bureaucratic devices with which we'll have to manage their nations. It would it'd be a shame to let all of it go to waste, would it not? In a land where the Republic has no allies, we must find some, and failing that, make some. And to survive, one must concede. Though the fascist Nazis and the pinko communist lapdogs are still loyal to their respective ideologies, the president does not expect that a current arrangement would last long. Once we are firm, we can't we can let go of these sympathizers and usher in our own loyalists. Now, this is what I'm talking about. The government of personal personalities. Government of personalities. West Alaska has a unique style of government. The world's outsider nature and connections to America has allowed him to have a broad field of ministers to help him administer the Republic. These range from CIA contacts, mercenary buddies, and collaborationist Russians and local politicians. However, the president must be aware of who on who is present in his cabinet for some sides may grow envious of others' power if not placated. Oh my goodness. So caffeine flow. Luxuries such as tea, coffee uh, were rare commodities during the chaos of the 50s and early 60s, only available to those with both money connections and utterly out of the reach for most of the population. However, as Russia stabilizes, access to the global economy has drastically improved. And now once rare commodities are being imported in increasingly large amounts. Chocolates, fruits, foreign wines, and of course, coffee and tea. Now access to caffeinated beverages is no longer a luxury restricted to the privileged few, but an increasingly common if so pricey drink of choice for many of our citizens. A toast for future successes. A man of a thousand lives. <clears throat> Roger Falques felt the creak of the wooden docks as he stepped off the boat, stumbling up the bed as he adjusted to being on land. Seagulls cried far above the poor city of Magadan, a place far from anywhere he'd ever set foot. As he walked alongside the docks, shuffling in between crowds of travelers, sailors, and dock workers, he felt old wounds ache. The bullet in his foot caught, fu caught fighting for his country against the crowds. The scars and bullet wounds from his time roving in Algeria, the bullet in his other foot, his chest and his shoulder, he caught fighting for the crowds or some other sordid power with enough money to convince the old soldier to bleed again in some hell hole in the depth of Africa for some new Reichsmarks and a lifetime of dual pain. The bullet that never left his right leg after the stint in the Italian, Italian Middle East, giving him a painful but difficult noticeable limp. A thousand other skirmishes lingered in his memory but left no mark that, like those years in North Africa, Central Africa, and the Middle East. 
So Roger was only slightly less able to do than he used to be, a fact that impressed his employers and drew him in fame and renown. The man of a thousand lives, they called him, so when Roger heard of Satan, Russia was hiring mercenaries and saw many people he had fought alongside flee to once again live the daring life of a hired gun, he decided to give it a shot. It was an odd feeling, waking or walking the streets of Magadan as he searched for a barracks, a hiring office, anywhere he could find a job. He felt like... <clears throat> It felt like he was less for looking for another place to work and more like he was looking for a place to belong. Certainly his career was story, but he was once again in a place filled to the brim with men like him. They all had a certain look, a look he found in abundance in a crowd of men ahead of him, circled around some building whose signs he could not make out. It, it did look like the place for Roger to be, though, so he set forward. Very cool. <coughs> so we probably don't need to see this, reunification of Russia. Development's going to be very important, but I have no idea what we're going to do here. Local politicians? Mercenaries? Collaborators? I mean, collaborator, collaborator, col collaborator influence is pretty. They're all equal. Let's put it like that. More weekly manpower, attack and defense. More recruitable population factor, encryption, decryption, or recruitable population factor, production efficiency cap. Now, <clears throat> I'm not sure which way we should really go. Doesn't appoint Borsh Posh. Minister appointment cooldown. Who is this person? Authoritarian democracy, reconnaissance. Is that someone we should. Oh, this is an intelligence contact. Huh. Mercenary connections. So, I have a feeling that we're probably just going to go full on mercenaries, probably. I have a good feeling that we will, so. I mean, you guys, let me know your thoughts. Like, I'm not sure how much this changes. I mean, I would love to become, like, another United States and Russia, but at the same time, we're both so unique in being a mercenary that I kind of want to just, like, go full-out mercenary, so... Let's enforce the Constitution, though. The Republic of West Alaska would be no country for its citizens if it did not have its Constitution. Largely modeled on the American system, it gives rise to both types of the citizenry, the foreign mercenaries and the locals. On these pillars, the Republic establishes itself. But without either, we would suffer. it would suffer a head of pain. <laughs> uh, no prosthetic can replace the limbs comprised of the human masses like the left and right hands. It needs to work together to achieve our collective goal. As such, a constitution is necessary. With the president's foresight, the nation is drafted one. There's only one way to go, enforcement. The army shall authorize the deployment of military police officers to break off disputes between mercenary and civilian groups. In addition, Warble shall give the prominent positions to collaborators that have agreed to join our cause. Oh, man. Man, this flag is looking kind of kind of awesome, not going to lie. Now, I love the older flag, the Republic of West Alaska. I think it looks amazing. I love it, love it, love it, love it. But, man, oh man. So what are we lacking? We're lacking artillery and anti-tank. Okay. Artillery and anti-tank. Go to three and three. And then, of course, a lot more of this as well. We can lower the amount of cast we're making right now. That's fine with me. Good. And actually, go up to five then. That's fine. We gotta share the wealth a little bit more. Germany restores order over Central Europe. And what do we have down here? Encourage returning people, squad patrols, invest in construction. Eh. Meh. So I was thinking, Sergeant Python Jack mulled the medic's question as he kept watch overhead of the makeshift camp. Pitch black, midnight shifts, and the idle chatter never led anywhere good. Then again, you're always thinking, Seong, but granted. Well, they're all Seong K. Jung Hua on his cot. Doesn't all of this sound like the silver screens? Bunch of mercs flock to a land of warlords taking things in their own hands and carve a place to call their own. All you need is John Wayne, John Fontaine, a hackneyed romance plot, and he clapped. Bam! Blockbuster of the year. Cross case at Kazmir. Oh! Kazmir's Kazmir's. Amber and a spark glinted off rim sunglasses, seemingly fused to the support to the support gunner's head. Like Boss said, Kate, keep Hollywood in Hollywood. Unless we're living in a fever dream of yours, West Alaska is now our home. One by one, or one by and for those without. Boss this, boss that, boss say something for yourself or a change, Kate retorted. I'm not the one who dresses up like a cowboy and trolls his pistols around, that's Baldy. He pointed at Adam, Shashka Abramov, who was throwing revolvers on each end. Mark of good taste, my Korean friend, it says a lot more about you than me, Shasur. Uh, if you can educate the young virgin on women's wants, Chasseur Morel whistled twice as a silent sniper fed around into her skull MAS-36. Someone was close. Before the conversation fully died, Jack leveled his rifle at rustling bushes where the clearing met trees. Then it split the air twice and a body hit the snow with a softest and thud. Ten more emerged with brandished guns. Fancy shooting, pa! Said K. Rep. 4. Lad filled the empty night. Where is the special activities unit? Oh! Ooh! We've got a fourth constitution in Hotline America. Well, actually, we'll do that one after you do this one. So... Air support. We're not going to use Marines. Let's go and grab Artillery Barrage first. First Special Activities Unit. Um, 
Bariba. 12 combat wits? That's not bad. I'll mingle, mingle them in with all those people. So, oh, look at that. Oh, man. So, who do we have here? Sergei. We've got Chioki. We have Bernardo. And we have Gordon Ingram, which is... Wow, civilian construction speed? That'd be great if we could actually build stuff. We are, but it takes so, so long to do. Build, invest more in construction. Uh, let's see. So, let's hotline America. Although World would like to view its establishment as a strictly independent endeavor. The big wigs in Washington do not see it that way. Though, through Werbel's old OSS colleague and friend, John Singelau, they've established oversight of this government, monitoring every political move, trying to shake him out. Is he a loyalist or a patriot? Is he a mercenary out for his own game? None can say at this stage. What is clear, however, is the Republic's dependency on American arms. Inevitably, we require contact with Lady Liberty to spread the light of freedom. Though the government must tolerate her prying eyes, her watch does not confer only discomfort. The soldiers of the Republic require weapons, and the factories of the United States can be better used to support a Swiss or a Republic across the Bering Strait. We will establish a hotline that connects us directly to the American government. That way, we can always ring them whenever things go south. Ugly truth, huh? Bad day to be Polish. Probably is. Uh, appoint people? Minister appointment cooldown, huh? So even if we appoint these people, does that give us more influence or not? Daily political power gain, non-core manpower. Appoint Jerry. He's okay for attack. He's actually pretty good. Some military intelligence. Mercenaries. Russians. Um, I'll be honest, I like who we already currently have, so... So these are the ministers. I really, really like, of course, the head of government. I think he's really good. But, hmm... The economy minister, the security minister, and the foreign minister. Huh. Russian collaborators, local peoples... Hmm... Infrastructure construction speed... I'm not really sure. Let's, I'm just gonna go ahead and come down here. Equipment is the most important thing to do, so... Actually, advanced developmental subsidies. Uh, that's not really worth it. Construction. There was another one that does that stuff. Heavy machinery. Oh, army professionalism. I mean, that's one we've got to do, no matter what, just because we're, we are who we are. So, govern like a Cincinnatus. Oh no! Do I choose govern like a Cincinnatus, or run like a Caesar? Rule like a Caesar. The mercenary Caesar. Oh, that looks better. Integrating the NKVD. Make use of the black shirts. Executive orders with us or against us. The carrot and the stick. A velvet gloved iron fist. Legal path to collaboration. Decrease mercenary influence. Oh, Bridger is a mercenary state. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't make me choose. Please don't make me choose. By dawn's early light. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Rule like a Caesar. Ooh. Werble. Despotism, fascism, we have national socialism, authoritarian socialism, as well as liberal democracy. Well, then, um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try to get down here, maybe. In the defense of the Republic, we have managed to triumph for the fascist, communists, and zealots to secure the Russian Far East, but our new states is far from safe. To a west lies the rest of Russia, ruled by those who would like nothing more than to crush us out of existence. To the south of the Japanese and their puppets, increasingly concerned about a commitment to the freedom and close ties with the U.S., with their own, own borders of countless dis dissidents and aspiring revolutionaries, each with their own beliefs, but all committed to toppling our rule, we cannot allow our guide to slip. There are already disagreements on how we should defend ourselves. Some argue for creating an army of loyal Russians ready to fight for their homeland. Others argue we should double down on working with the mercenaries who put us in power and have got us this far. One thing everyone can agree on is that our army must expand and be approved. We're no longer warlordship, but a true nation, and our military must reflect that. Uh, as in years of America. And then and then we found him face down in the gosh darn mud with his pants down to his ankles. Sin Lao laughed like a hyena, his old friend Werbel's familiar laugh echoing back at him from the telephone receiver. Werbel had given him a call to discuss business, something about Eastern Russia or Western Alaska or something, but it quickly devolved into banter and storytelling about their old days in OSSS. Oh, OSS. God, I don't even remember that. Must have been some opium crackle, Werbel. Before continuing, anyways, let's get down to business, old friend. I hear you're still working with the feds back in the States. Yeah, yeah, the CIA. Right, still not as great as the OSS, but that doesn't matter. That's why I called you on top of the personal stuff. What do you want me? See, I'd like to make a deal with you and the CIA back in the States. You shipped us some guns, bullets, and whatnot, and we looked out for you boys here in Russia. Keep you and the CIA updated on the situation here at all. Well, I'd have to run it by the deputy de de deputy director, but I'm sure I can pull it off. Expect a call from the high rise at some point to make sure everything's all set, but I think I can call it a few favors. Good talking to you, Mitch. You too, John. Ooh, we can improve our relationship with Uncle Sam. Oh, yeah, there we go. We go again. Okay, so seriously, we need more political power now. Like, this is getting a little crazy. We're only 0.69. Ugh. So terrible. So terrible. 
And you know what else is terrible? I just finished my coffee. Oh, terrible. Oh, hey, this is 10 out of 20. Indonesian warm, very nice. Mm. Well, we are mercs. Is it possible for me to send, um... Oh, we can't send volunteers. Wait, there's no reason... Man. Can we get, like, conscripted by the... Not conscripted. But have an offer by the CIA to invest in, um... What's going on in Indonesia? I think that'd be really cool. That's, maybe that's just me. Gateway to Russia. Uh... Yeah, I definitely want... Ooh, the question of recognition. We'll go to the Gateway to Russia. Because I want to get that army professionalism for every month, so... Magadon's status as a board has made the environment a near apocalyptic city into something that resembles civilization. The voice in that is the Far East. This gateway to Russia is one of our most important resources and allows aid for the rest of the world and something that many other regions do not have. We have to use this support to the best of our abilities as well as one of our main strengths. Yet Magadon is still a small port and we can only be, use it, using it, be using it at limited times of the year. Building in the port further can ensure swifter transportation of equipment and goods and keep the supplies coming in. Bad news, Mr. President. There's been some unfortunate news from our western border. It appears that one of our ranking mercenaries, a John Peters, has been involved in altercation with a local politician over procurement of housing for his unit. Said altercations end with the death of a politician involved in multiple stab wounds, with Peters saying that, and I quote, <clears throat> the effort deserved it for being a pretentious booty. <clears throat> but owning to a senior status, Peters has managed to escape punishment in her relations with the local population has noticeably worsened. Gosh darn it. Peters. A mercenary leadership. Mitchell. Mitchell. Mitchell Warble sat behind his old desk, the one that used to belong to the fascist Matkowski. He was still finding bottles of vodka hidden in the, his office even after all these years. Erbo, tired after a long day of administrative work, wanted nothing more than to be out with his boys fighting again against communists or whoever else, anything to get out of the gloom. It wasn't an enjoyable being behind the lines, but someone had to do it, and it was him. Sir, we have a new report for you. Another one, Erbo replied. How many of these am I going to get a day? It's very important, sir. You need to read it. Skimming the pages, it was mostly good news, depending on what good news could ever be in the Siberian wastes. Multiple sabotage events foiled, but most importantly, the Irkutsk hydro plant. The last pages of these reports were the most important, however. They were running out of mercenaries. Our boys are strong and well trained and said that, hey, but the problem is we've grown so fast we don't have enough troops to guard our borders to complete anti-partisan missions. We need a solution and the only ones to hire are more mercenaries are bringing Russians into our ranks. Orville stared into the pages trying to get a sort of answer from them. Perhaps he did need some sort of that vodka. He needs more. A difficult decision approaches. Very nice. Ooh. What was that? Hold on. Do we get another event? No, the opinion's still 50-50-50, so... Oh, well, maybe there was something there that I missed. I do want to increase relations with the Americans, though. But we just don't have enough political power. So maybe we should beeline getting more political power or something like that? So, hmm. Hmm. Wow, we definitely need more artillery. We're okay on guns. Planes, of course, are not very good. Can I throw on support helicopters at all? No? Man. That's what I get for trying to make some helicopters. I'm still making helicopters, but we'll see what happens. Encourage other thoughts. So does this, this stuff do anything at all? I mean, it looks like you just appoint other people, but like influence and such? Hmm. A gateway to Russia. Followed up with the Military Armaments Corp. Uh, corporation. The Military Armaments Corporation, or MAC, is one of World's personal ideas. In America, where multiple major armament companies already exist, there is not enough room for one more. Fit for Werbel's design. Russia, however, does not have the same problem. Werbel's idea can be realized in that MAC can reach its full potential in the organization and high-grade production of military weapons. Werbel is most excited about the MAC-10, a small submachine gun that is said to be a mass-produced in the Republic of West Alaska, before, which he helped develop before coming to Russia, the MAC-10. Man, I play, like, Killing Floor 2. MAC-10, huh? Huh. Hmm. 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 At least poverty's not looking too bad now. At least it's still in getting better for us, which is good. Very, very good. Actually, I'm not spending a lot of time with this one. Increase, slash. Not much money we can really do to deposit that, but that's alright. Keep making more stuff, guys. You're doing a great job. Next up. Uh, construct new training centers. To accommodate the Russians into our army, we must construct new training centers. We cannot rely on just mercenaries forever. Russia natives must be the backbone of our military. Hardened soldiers will be forged out of peasants, hunters, and fishermen better than any other soldier in Russia. All must be accustomed to life in the service for the greater cause and protection of the Republic. A transcendent partnership. Mitchell Livingston Werbel III shook his hands with Gordon Ingram, and they knew that he had met a kindred soul. Invited to set up a business in the Far East, Ingram had arrived only a short time before, but had already made quite an impression. The man was a visionary in the field of weapons design, and had shown him a number of proposed firearms he intended to continue development on or upon. 
He and Horrible besides have been most interested in a number of compact, extremely high, high rate of fire submachine guns, almost all enough to be considered at least sensibly a pistol. The military and clandestine potential of such a weapon was obvious, and Horrible had wholeheartedly agreed to facilitate the concerns, administ the administrative needs as much as possible. Warbolt even proposed some of his ideas of his own, primarily concerning the potential of such weapons with the suppressors of various sizes, which Ingram himself had found quite interesting. Both were sure there would be many more weapon designs to come, which would, could be leveraged not only for profit, but for the state's operations both domestically and abroad. Yes, Warbolt thought it was going to be another victory in the, for capitalism in the Far East, and who could complain about that? What should the NEP weapons be named? So we get better research research times, support, support unit research times, infantry equipment, production costs goes up by 10%, but more soft attack and reliability. Sign me up, son. Oh, yeah. Battle for Italy. Oh boy. Not bad, not bad. 0.83 is not great, but not bad as well. I'm going to go ahead and do the question of recognition next. To the surprise of the international community, our new Republic of West Alaska has grown to encompass the entirety of the Russian Far East. Our new state will need to rely in part on an international relationships and recognition in order to survive in the long term. Therefore, we need to send out our finest dignitaries in order to seek recognition from the world powers. Hopefully, this will work. And we get, do get some more political power, which is very, very nice. Nice? Nice. And hopefully soon we'll have the focus done and we can let's see. Zero days left. There we go. The question of recognition. New regime, same profession. Alexander Pavlov had been in force for many years under Madkovsky, had been in charge of many of the state security operations, and now under Warble, he was in charge of surveying many of the newly trained facilities that uh, had been ordered, opened, and ensured they were up to the standard. It was a good job, and of course, most importantly, was an ex excellent way to enrich oneself at the expense of the officers who were not up to snuff. He was naturally careful to moderate such efforts, or his efforts, to such a degree as not to cause trouble. Many of his former comrades had not been so fortunate, and he had indeed shot several of them to prove his loyalty to the new regime. He wondered what Madkovsky would have thought of him working with Warble's cell. The man had it always been supremely practical, understanding the need for hard choices. A party split and retreat to Magadan had been pr proof of that. He pondered Metkowski would have understood his choices. Pavlov quickly put the thought out of his mind. If there's one thing he had learned during the many years in the RFP, it was one that had to be very, ba very, very able and willing to change with the times. He had before when Metkowski had split from Lodzevsky. He was doing so once again. He did not know how long this new reality was to last, but as long as it did, he would ensure that he was a part of it, while also, of course, making sure he was really should it fall. He wondered if it would be if he would be the one to deliver the coup to Warbolt, should that happen? He suspected he would easily adapt to this reality as well. Opportunism is essential. Absolutely. Now, low. I want to get at least one more here before we do anything else. Societal expertise, scientific research is not bad. Education is not bad either. A gun that conquered Russia. Oh, yes. Let's do that one first, though. <clears throat> One day, you're coming back from a celebration dinner with your sweetheart. The kids are eating ice cream on the back seat, and everything seems fun, but then you are stopped by a mob of rioting thugs just around the corner. Think you you really think your old cult will be able to save your family? You can be sure that the crowd will regret picking your car when you pull out one of these from the glove box. Get your hands in the military armaments corporation M10, the gun that conquered Russia. Designed with a genius gunsmith, John Ingram, this compact 45 machine gun is only a bit larger than your usual pistol. Still packs more punch than the army's grease gun. 700 words of friendly persuasion in a minute. That'll make it the whole mob run and don't look back with just one quick trigger pull. If you're a man of action who is not content with just protecting your car or your log, we offer you the MAC Operational Briefcase. With a leather finish and a semi-rigid structure, you'll be able to carry your guardian angel anywhere you go and make it rain hell with the click of a button. But if your biggest problem is that annoying neighbor, the local communist agitator, or a curious federal agent, mmm, what you need is a legitimate sonics. A so uh... Sicknick's silencer. A creation of President Orwell himself, this masterpiece makes your M10 so quiet you can have a pleasant conversation on the telephone while throwing some lead down range. If you have the tax stamp in hand, just call the number on your screen right now to get your M10 delivered from Magadan straight to your doorstep. This segment was paid for by the United States of Siberia. Beautiful. <clears throat> God, that sounds so amazing as American. God, can I, can I order one? Uh, industry... Let's grab this one. More output is always good. And actually very, very welcome right now. Very, very welcomed. Oh, look at that. I, I cost went up, actually. Military spending? Huh. Well, no matter. We'll deal with it in time. Oh, we're done building civilian factories. I don't think so, son. 40, 80, yes. 80, 50, 100%. Not bad. Not bad. <clears throat> The U.S. accepts our appeal, and surprisingly, our friends in the U.S. have wholeheartedly accepted our appeal for recognition. The added legitimacy that comes with the recognition by a major power is helpful, of course, as there are many within our own borders who view our admittedly bizarre regime with suspicion. Now, at least we can say we're a genuine player in the Russian game and finally have some friends in the world to boot. Good, good, good. I love it. Context on the Hill, let's do a global reach. 
We could do that. We could do that. Let's do funny our endeavors. A ragtag force of mercenaries and misfit soldiers have achieved what many analysts and observers would call or decried as unfeasible and impractical. And now the Russian Far East is ours by right of conquest. President Werbold the Third doesn't want to rest on his laurels, however, and fully intends to continue the fight until all of Russia is ours. We'll do to do that. We'll need cash and fast. Securing such vast territories has propped up a wide range of opportunities for upcoming battles. With scores of war plunders still lying unclaimed. One way or another, we'll get this desolate hellhole to pay its dues. Awesome. 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 The very low, let's increase that then. <clears throat> so, for 60 days, daily political power. Now, let's take a look. Now, it costs 0.3, it costs 35, if I do say so myself. So, if it's 60 days times 0.35, that is 21 political power. So, basically, you're losing 14 political power for more, for 5% more stability. Now, is that worth it? For a little bit more stability, 5% for 14 political power. Well, let's see. That could give us slightly more daily political power in the end, more factory output. So let's go and do that. Why not? So we'll get up to 47. It's not a huge change, but, you know, whatever. Spend more. Now, slash that. That's going to continually increase. Oh, we already half a billion. Oh, my goodness. But where we're headed, once we take out the central the Siberian Republic, we'll be okay. Artillery barrage, don't mind if we do. Go and grab preemptive strikes, that's very, very good. Now Tom's led by Sakharov. Sakharov. Five to seven divisions, we're looking pretty good compared to him for now, especially with 20 combat with divisions. Now they might be using 40 combat with divisions because the AI does like to use them sometimes, but we'll see what happens. Open for business. Construction speed, I like the construction speed. Ooh, that does not look very good. War to the Vanquished, Last Weekly Stability, I don't like that. Open for business. Ever since the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia has been a giant metaphorical black spot on the map. The warlords had no interest in dealing with the outside world, and as a result, international trade has suffered a slow and unglamorous death. President Werbel knows this all too well, and the value of the free market, and believes that the time has come for it to return to Russia. Inspired by our American partners, we shall institute an open-door policy regarding international trade. Foreign businesses will be encouraged to set up shop on our shores, and in the process they will stimulate our young economy and open up thousands of new jobs. Naturally, however, some businesses will be more equal than others. Love it. But limited exports? Cool. So yeah, seriously, I'm not really sure what to do with this stuff. Let me know which I should do. I'm really pulling for mercenaries, though, because I think that's really good. Be besides, does this really do anything? Like, I guess it may skew us towards, like, whichever way we want to go, but you guys probably have better answers than I do right now. Expand the welfare state programs. Poverty rate? Let's improve poverty. I don't want poverty here. Not too much. Not in my United States of Siberia. 96, 97, 29.5, 113, uh, recurring, da da da, not bad, 400 some, wow, other expenditures, holy cow, we keep making more civilian factors, we'll do a great job with that stuff, open for business, well, well let's go and do season arsenals, our army continues to grow and it needs weapons and ammo to sustain itself, luckily for us, vast amounts of ammunition or munitions once stored or owned by the far eastern warlords are now within our reach, these weapons are now gathering dust in various warehouses and abandoned arsenals dotted in the country and procuring them will be necessary to make sure each and every one of our soldiers has a fortune of having a rifle in their hands, now, of course many of these weapons are likely to be outdated but this matters little, our men are the kind who used to make do with what they have and aren't the type to scoff at a rifle that doesn't have all the fancy bells and whistles that most modern armies are used to, for the time being we'll just have to use what's available to us. First delivery. Captain Frank Stevenson, shivered in his coat, bailing up his slum fist, numb fists, where they rested deep in his pockets. Despite the cold, he still kept his eyes peeled on his men as he hauled another crate of auto parts out of the cargo bay of his ship. The mere men, the men shivered as just about as much as him, the frozen bait of breath traveling into the air around them like wispy ghosts of the sea. This was their first run out to Siberia. Being a tramp fi freighter, they've made all runs all over the world, but being based out of the West Coast means that most of these ships have been to much sunnier places. Japan, Indonesia, Australia, Mexico, Hawaii, and ever some frozen Republic of West Alaska, as the locals called it, and frozen hellhole Russia. A few other captains do. We also started making their first few runs up to Magadan since the Russians finally started to get off their booties and rebuild. The San Diego native glanced over at a man approaching him, a Russian wrapped in a far few... Far fewer letters than he. You hear dropping off the auto parts, yes? Began the man in heavily accented English. Yes, yes, you're the buyer then, inquired Frank. No, 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 no. I just came to watch. There's been a big buzz around town with all the American businesses moving here. This is a forward shipment, yes? Mm-hmm. Never expect to make a shipment out here, much less auto parts. Figured if I was ever going to make it deliver to Russia, it'd be after an arms company deciding to start contracting us. They mostly make liners and do this stuff. Uh, Frank said shortly before muttering something along the lines of, This is one weird country. Apparently, the Russian had heard of the, of the slide and glanced over at Frank. After a brief pause that felt like ages, the Russian's neutral expression cracked into a grin. Tell me about it. I have to live here. 
Next up, improve worker training. That's not really worth it. Even though I like the bonus industry, you know what? Actually, I'm going to do that one. I want the bonus industry because we need to get that done very quickly. So we have so much industrial stuff we got to take care of. Very low. Well, we got to increase that as well. Actually, do we have the opportunity? No, we don't have the opportunity to raise relations yet, which is totally, totally fine. And we got some early helicopters. I've gone down this path so far. I'm going to keep going down it soon. We can wait, wait a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit more industry first. I think that'd be worth it. Let's go and do practical industrial administration. I think that's probably better overall. Excuse and arsenals. Woe to the vanquish, of course, my friends. Our arrogant foes have been brought low, and now their hordes of wealth are ours for the taking. Prices, Romanov relics, confiscated wealth, slashed or stashed away in the RFP's former strongholds, and expropart expropriated assets belonging to the Communist Party. They're all out here and waiting to be secured. Our boys will ride out once again to take what is rightfully theirs by force if need be. Once the plunder of our enemies has been secured, we can begin putting it to use. After all, it's not like the former owners will be able to do anything with it all. It's only fair that we make sure it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Now, I don't like losing stability, like I said, but consumer goods, minus 7.5%. That could really give us that small little boost we need to, um, you know, us. <laughs> Looking slightly better now. That's good. That's very, very good, actually. Improve American Relations. We'll probably do that one next. Yeah, that'd be good to do. Suharto, Ku's Indonesian government. Well, so much for that guy. So much for him. Hey, 50% stability. Not bad. And the game is lagging so hard. I'm seeing the blue we Microsoft wheel go. Hopefully, this is still recording. Oh, God. I hope it is. Oh, man. That's not good. That makes me feel super sad. But hey, 400 million. That's better than 430 some million, right? Actually, let's come over here and improve American relations. Yes, please. All right, and we'll finish this episode with another focused, cautious reinvestment. The Far East has been blood dry, and our coffers are overflowing with precious war plunder procured from the bones of our defeated enemies. Now comes the boring part, however, deciding what we're going to do with it all. Obviously, we're going to have to be smart about this and be careful with who we reinvest, or how we reinvest, but there in the eyes the question, how? One option would be to continue expanding our open-door policy with the OFN and continue inviting in foreign capital to help simulate or stimulate the economy. Of course, we could also focus on what we already have and invest in improving the infrastructure of the region and building up industry. With a limited supply of funds, we cannot have we have our cake and eat it too, so we'll have to do one or the other. Finders keepers, careful with those artifacts. Some of them are worth more than you lot. Kurt groaned as he heard his appear barking, struggling to pick or help a fellow merc lift a chest full of confiscated gold out of the front door of the opulent Dhaka. Clearly, this gilded structure was where the old Tsar once resided. Now it's to become. It was to become an empty husk stripped bare by Werbel's mercenaries. Every step became more difficult than the last. Even with the two men carrying the chest, the weight of the valley was within it, made transporting it a her Herculean affair. Come on, Kurt, put your back into it. I feel like I'm doing all the work here, Kurt's comrade. A large American man choked out with a strained voice. I'm trying to just poor Kurt could conjure, conjure some kind of explanation for his lackluster performance. He felt his chest began to wobble. Both men lost their balance, and an object slipped onto the ground and shattered could be heard. Gosh, bad word. The American grumbled under his breath. I hope the captain didn't see that. What did we lose? Kurt looked down to see a shattered picture frame containing a seemingly recent photograph of the old Cossack sitting next to a balding man wearing the same clothes of a royal. Two men whose deeds have been lost in the chaos of the Siberian anarchy, no doubt, Kurt turned back to his com comrade. Nothing too important, I think. Let's just keep moving. But regardless, hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me know which way we should go with Warble, you know, with his whole locals, mercenaries, collaborators, and with the paths in our focus tree. But regardless, Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.